Anybody else? Yeah. How do you manage to get the resources to have all this fun? Friends. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's the yeah. world's That's a good friend. What would be a raw, a gas, or a general figure? What was the budget for your film? I'm just curious. Are we talking two million, three million, or <laughs> more like ten or twenty bucks? Go <laughs> my share. Uh, it was a year-long project shot on 16 millimeter color film, uh, so it got a little bit more pricey than I would like, but it was roughly sixteen thousand. That's awesome. Matthew. You shot at sixteen. That's a great. Bighorn was $95,000. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, uh, Bighorn uh, was under 5000 but, you know, that's, that's, um, it's a little bit deceptive because we do have a lot of friends. Um, you know, Glenn produced it, and um, we have a lot of friends that come, and we cajole them and beg them, and, you know, we all work together. Um, this is my the fourth short of I've written and directed, and so you know we have a team. Jeff shoots for us, and and uh, as our cinematographer, and we kind of work with the same folks with with uh, Mark and with with Mike, and uh, uh, it, it's really good because I, I can't imagine how much it would cost if um, you know if everyone was you know getting paid. Occasionally, there are things you have to do. You know, you have to have food, and you you sometimes have to pay for you know to rent lights and that sort of stuff. But um, you know, we we shot over six days, but they weren't. All consecutive, but um, you know there's a there's a fair fair amount of different set changes on that. So I thought that was pretty good, especially where you, you know you're dealing with horses and you're dealing trying to get you know I'm on the phone trying to get the NFL to not you know just start screaming they're going to sue me you know and and uh, uh, and that sort of thing you know. So we're I always say you know I'm going to make a really easy movie this time. It's going to be indoors to people sitting at a table talking. The last film I did, we did a shootout on the runway at Pease with a moving Learjet. And, and, and this time, you know, it's Custer's last stand. You had buffalo and you had, you know, people with antique weapons loaded and horses and just thinking, this is just crazy, you know? So anyway, but it, it is fun and it really you couldn't do it without all your, you know, all our friends pitching. Uh, you know, uh, actually, the, anyone who got a producer credit actually gave me fifty dollars for it, but all the money went to pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and, and as we're going down the line doing prices, I have a question for you guys. Um, I had I was so amazed because I hadn't seen it, and um, the it was so simple yet powerful. And I have like even though. There was like 30 people in my sunglass movie. Like I'm always obsessively trying to put things in. You guys were very like, I would. How do you do it? And how much? <laughs> <laughs> That's because it probably costs nothing. <laughs> no, no, it, it was pizza. It was beer. Yeah, yeah I, I guess how we do it is, you know, I think we signed up for the 48-hour film project about a week before. We didn't even know it existed. So it was basically the two of us with no crew, no actors, no storyboard, no <laughs> script. Um, so it kind of had to be simple. Um, and neither one of us are filmmakers. Alfonso is a graphic designer and, and did the video editing. I'm a still photographer. So um, it basically came down to stressing out about what this was. Alfonso had a story idea, but we never really finished flushing it out. And I have to give props to him for taking what we did shoot and somehow editing it into a, in a story form that, that worked. Enough that you guys clapped, so thank you. <laughs> I, I like to say that it was made for free because that sounds really good. Um, it was made disposable income and all my projects were made for the cost of materials and on the hope of the people involved. Any other questions? Uh, let's go over there and then there. Uh, what woods are, is the uh, raccoons in, you know, where they put the body? Sorry? What woods are, is the body where? in? Where? <laughs> 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 I'll tell her, John. <laughs> <laughs> that, that location was my house and the other location was my house. And what was on your house? Uh, Cinder Block. <laughs> and uh, was the cut scene. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd go love that too much. 
So back there. Yeah, oh, for Ryan on the right. What was the Screen Actors Guild logo at the very end of the credits? Is that like is that an obligatory thing because the actors were members of the union? Uh, the lead actress, uh, Casey McDougall, was a member of SAG, uh, the Screen Actors Guild, and because it was in a student film, uh, we got special privileges in terms of not having to pay her unless we went past a certain amount of hours on a given shooting day. And one of the clauses in the contract with Simon Sag to get these privileges was that they have their logo at the end of the day. Good question. <laughs> there was one at the end. Somewhere we're Sag as well, we just didn't look the logo. <laughs> <laughs> That that was exactly it. Because we were trying to do kind of a Twilight Zone episode, even though the, the, the basic fact is, is a true fact. Um, you know, we kind of wanted to, to, to take it out into that Twilight Zone flavor. That that's exactly what we wanted. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Well, we we at the library are so thrilled to have your work and yourselves here. We hope you come back and do this again very soon. And we want a copy for our collection of all your films. Um, but we do have a few minutes left, so uh, the library will be closing around 9. But if you'd like to come up and introduce yourself and talk with the producers and directors, please do. And thanks very much for coming. Thanks again.